Hello everyone and thank you for joining today's webinar on permanent magnet motor analysis designed for e-bike application. I am Sumit Singh, an electric motor expert at AMWorks. AMWorks is a leading provider of electromagnetic simulation software for electrical and electronic designs from DC to millimeter wave frequencies. Our products are embedded in the most popular CAD platform namely SOLIDWORKS and INVENTOR. They cover a wide range of applications ranging from electric motors, generators, transformers and power electronics at the low frequency end of the spectrum to antennas and various wireless circuits and components at the high frequency end of the electromagnetic spectrum. I request all the participants to please feel free to ask your questions using the chat box option and our team will address all the questions at the end of our presentation. So to begin with, here is our today's agenda. First we will talk about electric bicycle market and its benefits. Then we will look into its components and what is the difference between and the pros and cons between the med drive and hub drives motor and then we will look at the design specifications that we are going to use today for our performance analysis purpose using the AMWorks 2D software and then later I will conclude today's webinar. So friends electric bikes have become quite popular over the past years since people get more aware of our environmental problems they also look out for a way how to reduce their carbon footprint in order to slow down the global warming and hence the electric bicycles are becoming popular and also it has various advantages. The first it is eco-friendly there is no emission of harmful gases. Second it helps you to ride faster you can reach up to the speed of 25 km per hour with the help of motor assistance. It requires less physical effort and it helps the people who are in their old age and does not as it requires very less effort the motor will help you to pedal until reaching a rated speed also in the case of a hills or having a inclined terrains or a rough terrain it allows you to smoother ride thus reducing stress on your joints and it is perfectly for the longer distance ride with a regular bicycle if you can travel 20 to 30 miles per miles are a pretty long ride but you can ride further on electric bike with the same amount of effort for longer distance and on an average this is between 40 to 75 miles on one battery charge and also it depends upon its capacity and terrain and the way you ride so as we see the global electric bicycle market size so we can see the trend that although it's a conventional bicycle or electric bicycle both of them are growing linearly there is an increase in the demand and you can see that it is predicted that in the coming future electric bicycle demand is also increasing rapidly so let us go through the different components of the electric bicycles and Basically, uh, electric bicycle has many components. It's equipped with display, which helps you to know your speed, the battery level of charging. Then it comes with thumb throttle, which allows you to move without pedaling. And of course, there is a power brake, front light, speed sensors, and many other components. But the important components that we are going to focus on today's webinar is the motor. And of course the battery is also one of the important components that's from where the motor get supply and today we'll focus on our motor design which generates torque and which helps you to propel the ride faster forward without even pedaling. So in the market we have various type of motor. The most popular ones are the hub drive and the midway drive. So as you can see the in the case of hub drive motor the motor is positioned in the front or rear wheels of the bicycle it is placed 
in the wheel hub making the connection between the motor and the ground directly a uh, front hub motor is often easier to install than a rear hub motor however a heavy front hub motor might put too much weight forward and cause the front tire to spin on hills and damp in circumstances so placing the motor in the rear wheel hub often results in more balanced weight distribution of the bike as a result the ride accelerates more gradually a rear hub motor is also easier to hide behind the gears systems and giving the e-bike a aesthetically like a regular looking bike and then we have the mid drive motor it's very simple to understand it's uh, the motor is placed between the pedals as you can see here at the bottom bracket of the bicycle it uses the bicycle drivetrain to transfer the motor's power to the rear wheel and move the bike forward so let's go into more detail and try to understand what are the advantages and disadvantages for this drive motors so as we can see for the mid drive motor it's more quiet and it's lightweight and long lasting and it helps to get more smooth power transition and better torque at lower speeds also it has a easier maintenance on moving part and improve weight distribution as the weight is at the center of the bike looking at its disadvantages it, it is less powerful it's expensive since the whole bike frame is built around the mid drive motor and in the case of chain snaps there is no throttle assistance to help the drive train and it becomes completely useless and usually it is suitable for experienced cyclist as you have to pedal more to get efficient speed for optimized pedal assisted range and if you look at the hub drive motor it's assumed to be affordable and it requires less maintenance compared to a mid drive motor and also it is throttle assist is widely available and it's suitable for a beginner cyclist as there is a throttle option of course and looking at the disadvantages for hub drive motor it is expected to be heavy and consumes more power than mid drives and it need for a visible controller and pedal assist sensor wheel spokes can work themselves loose over time as the power transition goes straight to the rear wheel so these are the pros and cons which we have summarized for a mid drive and hub drive motor and it's up to the user it's up to the designer and the manufacturers to choose which is better for them and of course there is a their own pros and cons so if you need something like more affordable and doesn't worry about the weight of your bicycle and the power it consumes of course the hub drive motor is the best option it requires less maintenance and the vice versa if you want something lightweight and long lasting and you can go with a simple mid drive motor so moving ahead let's go through the design challenges that we are looking today the first thing that we need to understand is designing an electric motor is a challenging task as its electromagnetic thermal and mechanical performances are coupled and need to be taken into consideration together at the same time and based on the design constraint and the user demands the motor designer has many choices and criteria to take care of so it's not very pretty straightforward to design a motor so here we have listed our some design challenges that we will be trying to mitigate using our design so first thing is to we need to simulate a pmsm type model for electric bike application then we would like to improve its cogging torque by increasing the number of magnet poles and then we will try to enhance its back emf waveform either by changing the winding configuration or we will also try to look at its magnet shape and how the back emf can be improved and then we will look at its flux air gap density for optimization and then later we will compare the performance at no load and on load conditions so to assist you in a simulation aeworks has a one stop for all your electric motor needs first we have the motor wizard tool 
It is a template-based model design software that allows users to accurately solve both electric and magnetic problems. It includes electrostatic, magnetostatic and transient solvers equipped with integrated analytical and finite element based solvers. Second, we have EMWorks 2D. It is 2D electromagnetic simulation software that uses the finite element to solve magnetic, electric and transient problems. EMWorks 2D allows you to study the effect of the geometry or simulation parameter changes on the design. It allows you to couple a transient magnetic study to mechanical motion and thermal. And then third we have the EMS tool. It enables users to do both electric and magnetic simulations using a complete 3D geometry. EMS is a true multi-physics software that allows users to couple the magnetic and electric design to circuit, motion, thermal and structural analysis on the same model in a hassle-free integrated environment. So we will be using EMWorks 2D to design our motor. So here are the design specifications. So to begin with we have considered two topologies. The first topology with 24 slots and 16 poles and then we will increase our slot pole number to 20 poles and then we'll see the effect on its performance. We have also tried to improvise the design by changing it from single layer to double layer and the base speed is around 1250 rpm for the initial topology and 1000 rpm for the final topology. The winding configuration is concentrated and the rest of the parameters such as the geometry dimensions like stator outer diameter, stack length and the, even the materials for used in the core and the type of permanent magnets are considered the same for both the topology. Here we have considered M36 steel grade for core material and grade 8 which is type of a ferrite magnet for a permanent magnet and we have used a copper of course for the conductors. Before jumping into the result section let us quickly go through how do we set the model in EMWorks 2D. So once we have a model in our software first different study settings are needed to be done such as material, boundary conditions, mesh and then comes the winding. So after we are done with these settings, we run the analysis and once it is completed, we can check the performance curves using the result table. So for our today's analysis, we have adopted the model from our one of the reference paper, which is tagged in our reference too. And we are also trying to compare the performance results as it is published in article two. So here is the on load that is the electromagnetic full load torque and also the no load which is nothing but the cogging torque waveforms for 24 slots and 16 pole motor. We can see the performance compared to article is on par and the average torque is around 2.3 newton meter and the cogging torque peak to peak is around 0.6 newton meter. In order to reduce the cogging torque ripple the idea proposed by the author in the paper was to change the pole numbers from 16 to 20 poles. And here, as we can see in the waveform, the peak to peak cogging torque was reduced almost by 77%. So for the 16 pole motor, it was around 0.553 newton meter, which has been reduced to 0.017 newton meter in case of 20 pole designs. Moving ahead, we compared our results to the article results and a similar trends was observed. As you can see here we have a one to one comparison for our software and the article which was published using the other electromagnetic simulation software. Next, the idea was to improve its back EMF and reduce the harmonic contents. So that the motor design was switched from single layer winding configuration to double layer winding configuration. It is very clear to observe here that the back EMF waveform has improved in case of 
double layer winding. So, so far we have tried to reduce the cogging torque by increasing the slot pull combination by increasing the pull number from 16 to 20 and then we switched from single layer to double layer which in turn helped better back MF waveform with less harmonic components. Next, for the 24 slot 20 pole double layer motor design, we try to compare its back MF voltage with our reference article and here we can see it it's also has a good match. Moving ahead, the shape of the magnet was improvised instead of using a radial magnet a rectangular shaped magnet was analyzed using this simulation software and the back MF was obtained at no load and it's very interesting to see that the back MF waveform shape has further become more closer to sinusoidal and also its peak has increased a little by little bit. Our next step is to analyze the performance of back MF from Moving ahead, we also tried to compute its no load magnetic flux density for the radial flux magnet shape. Using this, it helps user to understand the magnet air gap flux density and we also try to compare it with the reference article. We do see here some of the peak values are not matching in our EMX study with the article, but it's only due to the the type of material we have used. We have tried to approximate the material library what has been used in the article. So that's why and still of course uh, we have a different meshings. So that leads to such difference in the results. Using magnetic flux density user can understand the flux path and we can know which are the part of the motor is saturating and accordingly we can adjust the diameter of the motor or the thickness of the stator tooth and the back current core we see here that the maximum is around the rotor core and which is around 1.48 tesla and the stator tooths are within well within the limit so this is how we can understand the magnetic flux density throughout the motor part next we can see here the no load magnetic flux density for the rectangular shaped magnet. Similarly, our flux density in the air gap was obtained and we have a close match with respect to the article. And also we can see here the magnetic flux density has little bit increased, which is around 1.51 Tesla, but that is also well within the limit of the properties of the steel, the type of steel which we have used and uh, it's a good to go design. Here we try to compare the electromagnetic performance for the rectangular magnet versus radial magnets and we do see here that the oral torque ripple has reduced in the rectangular shaped magnet and uh, if we compute analytically its uh, torque ripple has reduced by 33 percent which was around 1.86 newton meter in case of radial shape and now it's just 0.62 newton meter in case of the rectangular shape magnet so what we did in our today's webinar is we designed a outer rotor pmsm motor it was a surface mounted pm rotor we started our simulation with 24 slot 16 pole configuration which was in single layer we observed that the the cogn torque was very high and also it has some amount of harmonics component we try to increase the pole configuration from 16 to 20 with double layer and our cogn torque was reduced and we got a better wave back mf waveform our average torque has also improved in case of rectangular shaped magnet and uh, we do see that torque ripple has reduced and even though our outer diameter of the mach machine remains the same therefore the torque density of motor has increased in case of in the case of final topology 
So let us go through the quick demonstration for our AMWorks 2D software. So AMWorks softwares are completely embedded in the SOLIDWORKS platform, which gives the user a complete freedom and flexibility to design their motor as you can get access to a complete CAD platform. Once you are in inside the SOLIDWORKS, it's very easy to go to tools and you can use the AMWorks products option to launch your AMWorks 2D software. To begin with, first we need to sketch our rate stator and the rotor part. For demonstration purpose, today I am showing you here uh, another kind of auto rotor motor which has a braid loft shape PM. And the first step is to sketch the model. And once you are done with it, you have to simply go and click on the AMOX 2D tab. So, AMOX 2D software is kind of add on to our SOLIDWORKS platform. So, to begin the study, we can click on our model and we can click on this study so here we can see we can have uh, access to a uh, several types of analysis either it's magnetostatic electrostatic AC magnetic or transient magnetic you can even select whether we want to compute energy or parameterize the model you can couple this model to thermal analysis rotational motion or uh, you can even couple to circuit so this all study is possible under the same environment once your geometry is ready, so to begin the, its analysis, we start with this setting the material. So the first step is to set the materials for the, your stator core, for the rotor core, and for the rotor core includes it's a part of the magnet. And here we have used NDFB magnet and M27 steel for the stator core. Once we are done with the material setting, the next step is to create a magnetic potential around your motor so this you can assign as a potential and give it as air region next step is to select all the parts of the motor which is responsible for torque or force generation so as you can see here we have selected our rotor core and the magnets for virtual force and also the torque calculation and then finally we have another step to set the mesh so here you can use either a global mesh variable or you can use the mesh control to set if the mesh region either more finer or coarser for any part of the component. So let us look at the mesh of the model. So here you can see we have set the mesh for our geometry. So that was the setting to run before the any FE analysis and then last the most important part comes the excitation. So we need to arrange our coils in a three phase configuration and excite its coil A with positive direction and another part of coil A as the negative direction or the in reverse flow. And you can click on the show symbol which will easily give you an access to the direction of the current flow. That's why you can make sure that your current directions are are in correct are in well positioned and you have a balanced three phase winding so once we're done with the phase a coil the next step is to move to phase b and similarly to phase c and the simply the thing is you have to change uh, you need to create an offset of 120 degree phase shift between all the three phases you can also choose your coil whether you want a current driven or voltage driven and if you choose a current driven we also give a flexibility use to the user to either choose a sinusoidal current excitation dc current excitation or any kind of pulse current excitation or if you want to test your motor from the inverter driven output you can import your own current time curve in the excel sheet using the excel sheet format and will help you to analyze your motor so once we're done with the winding setting, we click on the go to the study and run the analysis. When the simulation runtime is finished, AMOX 2D provides you two types of results. One in a form of waveform plot and another is the field plots. So let us look at the results. So it's so it's very easy to get the various parameters such as if you need a flux linkage, 
Just simply you have to select all the parameters of the phases, add in your study, parameter, parameters and plot preview and this gives you the flux linkage. And since we haven't excited our coils and it just at the no load, you can see its torque and you can see its Kong torque performance. Also, if you want uh, to see its flux variation, you can just click on its magnetic flux density and it will provide you the magnetic flux density across the whole motor region. And if you would like to animate it, you can simply go to animate option and click on animate versus time. If you would like to change your plot format from fringe to vector, it's very easy and it's just a click away. So it immediately update your plot with the vector plot. And then also if you want a contour lines, you can get the contour lines. So this was a quick demonstration for our Emacs tree software. Moving ahead to our webinar. So to conclude our today's webinar, we used a surface mounted permanent magnet auto rotor design for our electric bicycle application and we used one of our software a 2d software for its simulation and performance analysis we increased the pole pair to reduce the cogging torque and we also switched the winding configuration from single to double layer including we changed its uh, magnet shape from radial to rectangular which resulted in a enhanced back emf having a lesser harmonic content and this has led to a improved electromagnetic torque these are the references which we have used for our today's analysis purpose thank you so much everyone for attending today's webinar and see you in the next webinar thank you so much i would like to thank all the attendees for joining our webinar today so let's start with the question So we have how the phase shift of 120 degree between phases is set in transient magnetic study. So for that you can create, excite uh, the coils as per the A phase and set the delay of set as zero degree. And in order to create a delay of 120 degree, which is nothing but the one third of a one electrical cycle. So for that you can easily compute the end time time as a time period and then you can set the delay as one third of a time period for phase b and then simultaneously you can go with the two third time of the time period and then you can set that as a delay for phase three that will help you to create a phase shift between the phases and to excite with a three phase excitation next question we have how long does it take a typical 3d simulation of motor take like okay i understand your question like you want to understand like what are the, what are the computation time for the 3d simulation so of course like for 2d it takes a couple of minutes means it can take from two to five minutes based on your number of meshes and element and nodes you have as well as what's the size of a model and uh, but although 2d is much much faster than 3d and uh, 3D usually takes in like in half an hour to an hours and maybe sometime it takes a day if you have a very complex model and you have gone with very fine meshes or you have billions of elements and nodes into it. So it's not possible to give you a direct answer about the time competition, but of course 3D will take some hours to run the model. Next we have, what kind of circuits can be coupled for transient simulation? So in our coupling, transient coupling, we do have a passive element such as resistor, inductor and capacitor, very which you can easily couple and create your own network around the motor terminals or in case if you want to compute your motor as a generator application, you can connect these loads and see how much current is coming out of the motor when you rotate at certain speed and when certain voltage is applied. So this way you can use this couple trans uh, circuit coupling for your transient simulation. Next question we have, can you please provide the geometry difference for radial and rectangle type magnets? 
and following with that uh, the question is in image it was showing the same shape well since we had a 16 pole 20 poles so it was very hard to see the difference but for the radial it had a, some kind of arc in the shape and for rectangle it was a pure rectangle magnet set or pasted or it was attached to a rotor core outer rotor core so why rectangle is preferred because in terms of cost that becomes very cheaper you don't have to make any arc shape cutting to your magnet and commercially it's very easy to uh, in terms of saving material you can easily get a cheaper version and when we saw the result we, we found that okay the results what we got from the rectangle magnet uh, what was also reported in the paper was very similar and uh, and it was very in terms of uh, performance it was improved although we save in the cost and the reason it got improved because it now you have to understand here the magnetic equivalent circuit of the motor so when there is a let's say one rotor pole is facing a particular conductor now as the rotor rotates the change of flux variation that is happening is more smoother in rectangle magnets compared to radial magnets and because of that the torque ripple even the vacuum of harmonics get some of them get cancelled out and reduce the harmonic component so although it was not visible in the images but it was a regular radial shape magnet and the rectangle magnet which was used and even you can go through the reference paper and you can see that in the reference paper to have a better understanding Well, I don't see any much any more question pop, popping up so we'll just wait for another some minutes meanwhile please visit our website and register for our upcoming interesting webinars if, if you have missed any of the past webinars then you can fill out the form for the webinar recording request our team will be glad to send you the recording and if you have any questions or doubts for us at a later stage also then you can contact us through our sales team or you can approach us through our LinkedIn EMworks user group page Thank you, Paul, for your appreciation. And yes, the recording, as I mentioned, will be soon available on YouTube. And meanwhile, you can visit our YouTube page by searching to EMWorks, and you'll be able to find our past webinars videos. And you can see some of the tips and tricks to use our software and get familiar with the EMWorks product. So once again, I would like to thank everyone for all your queries and see you in the next webinar thank you so much